That's the other thing too, I forgot to mention that. The braking is... Welcome back everybody to the EVX channel. My name is Mickey and today, once again, we are talking about the InMotion V12, the most exciting wheel so far to come out this year. And today we are talking about performance on the V12. So I'm gonna tell you just what you need to know to get the most performance out of the InMotion V12. Coming alive. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about a few things that are gonna set you up for success for riding the V12, and the first one is braking. What is the braking like on this wheel? You guys know I harp on braking all the time, especially in a setting like an urban environment where braking is key. You need to be able to brake when and how you need to to stay safe out there. Secondly, we're gonna talk about acceleration and power. How do you get the most power and acceleration and performance out of this wheel? And third, we're gonna talk about pad setup. Can you use the stock pads? Do you need your own pads? What kind of thing is gonna set you up for success? Well, let's dive in. So as I mentioned before, this wheel is basically the customization king, and I have an entire video going into that really in depth. So if you go to my V12 playlist, you can find that and dive into that. But for now, we're gonna do a bit of a flyover as far as how to customize this wheel to fit your ride style so that you can get the most power out of this thing. Really quickly, this video is sponsored by eWheels.com here in North America and eRides.com in the UK and Europe. So if you'd like to make the purchase of an electric vehicle of any kind, find the respective links down below in the description and uh, support this channel. All right, let's get back to the video. So before I go into talking about the braking and the acceleration, I wanted to set a baseline here. I wanna talk about the ride settings I like to use. Now, as we've talked about in other videos in my customization video, that there is a ton to customize here. So be sure to go check that video out if you haven't done that already. But let's start with the baseline. So the drive mode, as they call it, which you have an option between off-road and commuting. I start with off-road, that's my baseline. The reason for that is that is, to me, the purest of that motor, giving you the most power output you can. And then I like to draw it back from there and tailor it down. So next, I take that pedal sensitivity slider and I crank that down to about 80%. That, to me, gives me a bit of softness on the takeoff and the braking. And then from there, I like to go into the app and mess with those other sliders. That would be the acceleration and braking sensitivity sensitivity. I like to call it the split ride mode settings, but essentially I take the brake and I crank it down to negative 30. I do the acceleration down to negative 15. The rationale here is this wheel suffers from a bit of top heaviness. So there's a bit of brake wobbles that you might experience if you have it on hard, hard, hard mode and you're just flying down the street. So I take the brake and I set it to negative 30. That's gonna soften it out even more for someone like myself. I have found that if you go a lot lower, so if you go negative 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, it does get really hard to ride it itself afterwards. I think if you're down lower, it takes way too long to get back to center. For me, negative 30 is, is like the sweet spot. The motor here does feel a little underpowered when you're trying to eke the most out of it. I think for generally high speed riding, it'll do just fine and it actually is really peppy. Like you saw here, he like around four seconds or so was like one of his fastest times where he was able to get up to speed. That's pretty impressive. I don't, I don't have anything to compare it to, but like, I don't know, it's like, that's, it's fast, okay? But we were pushing it to the point of almost failure on the motor. So 
the braking is, you know this is my thing, right guys? Like I always <laughs> wanna know like, A, how good is the brake? Um, and also like, can we overpower the motor? And for sure, like I'm not a guy I can say that ever really overpowers a motor. <laughs> Law, on the other hand, is a different story. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was actually over, what do they call it? It was dipping. So I was just starting to overpower the motor on the braking, a little bit on one time on the acceleration, but especially on the braking. Um, so, you know, be careful. They've done things to tune this to make it better for braking, but ultimately they didn't really solve the issues I had while I was helping them develop this. It still just doesn't stop uh, fast enough. That that's my thing. I don't I don't know what it is. What do you what do you think? Without pads, if you're weighing less than 150 pounds, you're probably not going to be able to overpower it unless you have uh, unless you have pads. So padless, just running at stock, you're, you'll be perfectly fine. You're not going to have any issues. Uh, again, if you're setting up pedal spikes, if you're getting the most out of using if you're using jump pads to use your insteps to crank the wheel forward. That's another huge factor and you will be able to overpower the wheel. When you're braking, if you're braking and you're doing the seated braking and you're holding onto the handle while you're doing that, easily you'll be able to rip it back. But at the same time, you can also use that to play with that little boundary and try not to cut out, but at the same time, get more out of the braking experience. In general, this is a very peppy wheel. You're gonna get a lot of acceleration and torque out of it, especially if you leverage it with power pads and the right technique. So I would say it's a really good motor, but not the greatest. What I'd say is if you're on an RS, MSP, uh, or anything off the 100 volt M super line, you're gonna end up having that little bit of extra torque that lets you feel a little bit safer when you're accelerating and braking. But again, I mean, with this wheel, it's feeling super comparable to the Nikola and 16X in terms of acceleration and braking uh, potential. Uh, this one's gonna be able to hit that slightly higher top speed in theory, but really it's, it's just a matter of your pad setup and the way that you're pushing the wheel. So in general, I think InMotion has really done a good job with you know pairing all the things together, the firmware, the, the motor, the power. Again, we are like experienced riders comparing this to a high speed or high torque Gotway here, right? Like that's, it's our frame of reference. So it's not quite nailing something like an RS or an MSP, but as far as the competition, I think it's doing um, on par, if not slightly better than the Nikola. And of course, just murdering the 16X. So. Hopefully that gives you a lot of value. So for acceleration, you can see I'm doing a bit of a heel toe thing here. It may not be the correct and right way to do that, but you know, this is sort of how I've been riding this wheel and I ride some of my other wheels like this. There are guys who have really perfected this heel toe thing and could talk more about it than I can. But just shifting my weight like that allows me to turn the wheel at a bit of an angle on its side to gain more power output out of it going left and right. So you can kind of see that here. You can see how I'm just taking off and getting down the street like this. Um, and then obviously for the braking, the technique you're gonna wanna use is just sitting back like you're sitting into a chair and squeezing the wheel. I think the real key to success here is squeezing the wheel as close to the axle or center point as possible when you go to brake and lean back or lean back into a sit for a longer, harder stop. But that center point, that center grip is gonna really help you in braking quickly and efficiently. The other thing too is when you're stopping, you probably also wanna do a bit of a carve. On this track here, I wasn't really doing a carve. I wasn't really going past like 30 miles an hour. But if you're going a lot faster, because this wheel can do that, you're probably gonna to wanna to also lean back, do a little sit back and carve as well. This is really gonna give you a lot more power to stop the wheel. Okay, so let's talk about the pads. A lot of people are gonna be wondering how nice are the stock pads. To be honest, I don't love them. Originally, when I was talking to them, helping them develop the wheel, I really was like, listen, a lot of people now are buying their own pads. They are getting it from wherever, or they're making their own custom pads. I think you should get rid of that pad situation at the top, just leave it blank. Maybe sell people some pads, some InMotion V12 pads, but I think you should just leave them off altogether. But alas, I lost that battle, unfortunately. So <laughs> unfortunately, those will be there and they'll be a bit beefier, I'm told, than what you're seeing here in the video and on this uh, demo wheel I have. But most people probably wanna invest in the purchase of some other third-party pads. For myself, I'm a huge fan of the Clark pads. I like to use those a lot on a lot of my wheels. It's not all of my wheels. On here, I have the V2 Clark pads. These are really great because they're a bit squishy, but they also give you support, and really you can dial it in by doing a Velcro setup like I have here, so you can just really put it up or down wherever you need, depending on the day or the hour. The other option, if you're not buying third-party pad, would be to design your own custom pads. These 
are one small portion of uh, the custom pads that Law made for me. These, these are my pads. As you can see, there's sort of a beveled edge here and a beveled edge on the other side as well. And unlike the Clark pads, which have a more pronounced edge, but still a bit of a bevel, um, these allow you to slip in and out if you need to. The other thing is there's some bottom pieces. Oh, here. There's some bottom wedge pieces. And here's some of that DKL stuff right here. The wedge goes down here. That way your foot can get underneath it and get locked in. But because it's on an angle, it doesn't like um, lock you in for good for good. So you can kind of just dip out if you need to. Any of those pads are gonna work really well for you on this wheel. I think a naked wheel like this can work for anybody, you know, just using the stock pads. But to be honest, if you're really wanting this to have that fun, exhilarating sort of peppy experience and really draw the most power out of it, I highly recommend you just use something third party or custom. So that's what a third party pad situation would look like. Oh, and the last thing I want to talk about was the tire. So the tire I have on here is the H666. So I believe this is going to ship with the 5146. I forget who the manufacturer is, Chow Yang or, yeah. Chow Yang 5146 is what I believe they're going to ship with. I now have changed my mind. I was into that. I, I think the 666 would be best to ship with. So I'm going to try to push them in that direction. But chances are you're going to have one of these two tires. I prefer the 666. I think that just the, um, I don't know, the shape of the tire gives it a lot more diversity for different kinds of riding and also a lot of grip when you're in deep carves. So if you're a deep carver, this tire is gonna be great for you. Don't get me wrong, the other one is really great. That was the one I was like, yeah, yo, you should go with this tire. But the 666 is just a little bit better. But either way, I think, you know, God rest the soul of the CST awful tire that should never end up in any wheel ever again. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that you're going to be happy with the tire choice and it's going to also help uh, with traction when you're accelerating and braking and turning and carving. So you have a lot to look forward to in that respect. So Mickey, hold on. Uh, so what we got also, uh, something that I keep forgetting to mention is the way that in motion tune the wheel is perfect. So what happens is when you're going on a bank and you're carving or when you're power, trying to power through a turn, a lot of wheels end up dipping forward with the nose. So the problem with that is if you're making contact with the toe end of the pedal, and you end up hitting the ground, you have a higher likelihood of falling off the wheel. Whereas if you're grinding perfectly on the center of the point or center of the uh, pedal or the heel of the pedal, it's going to be way safer to just potentially glide over the street or glide over whatever gravel. Uh, you'll end up noticing right here on the uh, grind pattern of the pedal, it's right dead center. And because well, yeah, I see it right here. Yeah, it's perfect. I love it. Because I kind of got way or something, it might be here, right? Yeah, that grind pattern. The only wheel, the only other wheel that has something like this is the MSP Torque. That's why the MSP Torque's my favorite wheel, outside of uh, outside of uh, this thing, right? Uh, just because of that grind pattern and the way that it scrapes. And these pedal spikes here, these are your design. They yeah, so perfect. this is carpet mat, double-sided tape to tack it on, and then you throw some grip tape on top of it, trim the knobs a little bit, just and to it's just sticking. It perfect. Yeah, it's genius. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect as far as like adhesion up and down, but when you have it on, you're not going to be able to slide it forward, guaranteed, because you're throwing it directly on top of the original grip tape. Right. Dude, that's killer. Cool. So if you're looking for more V12 content, I have created an entire playlist about the V12. There's like seven other videos or so on the subject. So go over there, find it, go for it, drink it in, you know, watch what you got to watch, and hopefully it's beneficial to you. I think that's all for now. So thank you so much for watching, and keep riding. Never stop.